Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I am delivering another Boku no Hero story, this one featuring Bakugo. I hope you like it, because I really like it. Why? Well, simple. I have read a lot of Boku no Hero stories in my life, and uh, to be frank, none of them had a plot like mine. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel unique now. Can I, can I, get, can I get a clap? In celebration for this, how about you watch the video until the end, like or dislike it and comment something down below. Maybe your favorite part of the story. Yeah, that would be great. And if the entire thing is your favorite part, just comment that you just love the entire story down below. This is the best way you can support me indirectly, but there are more direct ways so you can support me. Simply check out my merch store or my Patreon. Both links are down in the description. You can also share the video around. If you can just get one person interested in my videos, I will be eternally grateful to you. Lastly, any fan art will be greatly appreciated. Just send it in my Discord. Link down below as well. In form of the invitation link. Yay! I even figured out how to increase the uh, invitation time to be infinite. So finally figured that out. Uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. And please, if you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to join my beautiful darling doll army. Now please, enjoy the show. You were excited. It had been months since the last time your father had visited you. You had been unaware of his dealings, and so far you had spent your childhood oblivious to your own exile. A mansion on a secluded island was your home. Out in the distance you could see the lights of a grand city, and every day you had wished to see it. Your father kept you away, however protecting you from people called villains. They wanted to hurt you and take you away from him, and he simply would not allow that. Occasionally, however, a man would come visiting you. It was scary at first, but eventually he became somewhat of an uncle to you. In fact, he even let you call him uncle. He brought you food and played with you from time to time. Whenever he wasn't watching out for your stepbrother, who was somewhere in the big city fighting villains. Today was your twelfth birthday, which meant your father would come visit you. He only showed up on your birthday and with your stepbrother on Christmas. Dressed in your favorite black frilly dress, you patiently waited in the entrance hall for your father to arrive. While humming, a large shadow suddenly appeared in the glass of your main door, and you smiled. The knob twisted, and three men entered your estate. Your father, your uncle, and a weird-looking thing. Hello there, my child. Happy birthday, said your father, his voice muffled by his large black mask. You squeaked happily and pounced your dad, while he laughed cheerfully, wrapping his large arms around you. Master, we can't stay for long, said your uncle. Your father's right hand combed gently through your hair. Kurogiri, I see my daughter twice per year. Give me a few more minutes. He made a confused noise. Don't worry, baby. Daddy has to fight a villain soon. Your heartbeat increased. Please don't hurt yourself, you asked worried. But your father simply chuckled. It is fine, my daughter. Today is your day. Don't worry about me. He let go of you, and once he had regained your composure, 
Your father pointed at the weird thing. It was a man. That's as much as you could tell. And you'd been afraid of him if it hadn't shown up with your father in Korogiri. This is Normu. Your birthday present. Your eyes widen. I don't want a slave. You exclaimed. And your father laughed. <laughs> no, no, not a slave. A friend. I made him with my quirk, just for you. You turn towards the Nomu. You made him? How? Something told you you didn't want to know. He was a bad, bad man. And your daddy's quirk made him into this. Now he is friendly and only wishes to protect and play with you. You clapped your hands and bounced happily. The Nomo was roughly the size of your father. His muscles so big that his mighty pecs probably could crush a watermelon. His brain was exposed on the sides of his head, and black leathery skin was hanging off its body. As if the skin itself was a size too big for it. On top of that, he was wearing black pants and boots. He didn't have sharp teeth, however, and kind-looking green eyes that looked at you fondly. You walked closer to the giant. Mr. Normo, would you like to join us for a tea party? The monster tilted its head and glanced at your father, who happily nodded. It wasn't long after this wonderful last birthday when you learned the ugly truth behind the Nomu, your father, and his dealings. When he didn't visit you with your stepbrother Tomura on Christmas that year, and skipped on your next birthday as well. You eventually forced Korugir to tell you everything. Thanks to the power of Nomu, of course. It had been a shock. You felt shame and embarrassment. But mostly you felt betrayed. Your whole life had been a lie up to this point. But also you could understand why. Your father really did care about you. He just wanted to protect you. That, however, didn't change your desire to leave the island. You wanted to see the city. You wanted to make friends, real friends. So Kurugiri agreed to let you free on your 16th birthday, as long as Nomo would be with you. By then you had developed a wonderful relationship with the monster. You even managed to teach him simple sentences. It was almost like having a real friend. Madame, began Kurogiri as he finished teleporting you. When you wish to go home, tell the Nomu. He knows where our base is, and from there I can teleport you home. And with that, your shadowy uncle vanished into nothingness. He had left you a hefty sum of money. That, combined with your dress and sun hat, made you feel like royalty. Especially since you had a wonderful bodyguard. Your Nomu was wearing a long brown trench coat and a wide brown fedora that covered his less than appealing face. And so you two went on your first shopping trip. Every time you interacted with someone you hoped you weren't acting too weird. After all, the only contact you ever had up to this point was your father, Tomura, and Kurogiri. Nomo didn't do much, so technically he didn't count. But your anxiety was for nothing. You acted perfectly ladylike, just how Uncle Kurogiri had raised you. You were just enjoying some fast food with Nomu 
when a blonde boy approached you. He was wearing a grey school uniform. Hey, uh, are you a tourist? He asked with a mild blush on his face. Behind him were two boys and a girl with pink skin, chuckling away, wearing the same uniform. Uh, is this a scam? You asked while tilting your head. Uh, well, n no, no, he stuttered. That comment seemed to agitate him, and he sighed. I bet with my friend that I could get your number. Just, just write a few numbers on the napkin, all right? He sounded annoyed. You glanced at Nomu, whose entire attention was put on the blonde boy. Then you turned back to him. Ask nicely. The boy blinked and you gave him a patient smile. Ask me nicely for my number. A dumbfounded expression was left on the guy. He didn't really expect this outcome. Uh, could I maybe get your number? He finally asked. Nomu? You said while looking at the monster. The boy made an undescript noise, but you didn't bother. Give him my number, please. Yes, grunted the monster before pulling out a pen. He then wrote the telephone number of the mansion on a napkin and gave it to the boy. Don't make lady regret, boy, mumbled the Nomu. What's your name? You finally asked with a smile. Up until you now, you hadn't noticed the boy's shocked expression. Uh, something wrong? N no, no. He shook his head, getting back his composure. And then he jumped up and grinned. Name's Bakugo Katsuki, future number one hero. <laughs> well, Mr. Bakugo, I'll be waiting for your call. You gave him a gentle smile. And with a terrible feeling in his gut, Bakugo returned to his friends. So, how did it go? asked Mina Ashido with a giggle. Can't always win, laughed Kirishima. But Bakugo's scowl was for a different reason. I got her number, he muttered. <laughs> Holy moly, our Bakugo is becoming an adult, said Mina with a white grin. It's not that, bitch. After making sure you weren't looking, he pointed at your normal. That thing isn't her dad as we expected. It's a normal. The first one to react was Kirishima. He gently placed his hands behind the backs of his friends and pushed all three of them out of the food court before finally speaking up. So, you think it's a trap by the lake? Bakugo shook his head. She didn't seem to recognize me. Or my uniform. Uh, didn't see her in the lake's base when I was kidnapped. And we didn't even agree on meeting yet. She just let that thing give me her number. For a moment his friends went deep into thought, before Saro finally opened his mouth. Dude, just be glad you got a girl's number. The others gave the energetic boy a dumbfounded look. Clearly she isn't part of the leak, or else she wouldn't be running around in the open with an obvious attire like that. Maybe this is all coincidence. He paused and gave Bakugo the thumbs up. Call her! Ask her out and go to a very public place. There you can ask her anything. And we will be on standby should things go sour. A feeling arose in the explosive blonde. Was this trust? Was he feeling happy? And with a defeated sigh, he said, ah, Fine. Thanks, Sarah.